start today tonight with a question: What does the future world look like? I'm sure every one of you here sitting in the audience will have a picture of the fu future world、uh, in your own imagination. Here's one child's rendering of the future world. <laughs> This young artist had a beautiful idea. That parents are on a movie night out, and very friendly robots are cleaning the house, cooking the dinner, and bathing the child. Note that the kid is actually happy and smiling. So,、mm -hmm. don't we all want that? So, I want you to look at this picture and think about one question: Have you ever noticed that in our im imagination, robots all have eyes? Why does it need to have eyes, right? It doesn't necessarily have to. So one simple answer would be that this artist is only seven year old, and in all his or her life,、um, animals. He's familiar with animals and、uh, humans, and we all have eyes. So it's natural robots have eyes. But maybe there is some deeper answer to this. So to answer this question, let's just imagine a scenario. In which that the robots don't have eyes, what would happen to them? So we haven't built these amazing robots yet, but we might have something close. So here is a robot that most of you know. It's called Roomba, and Roomba is almost as good as the cleaning robot, and it does go around and clean our room. So now let's take a look at the scenario and see what's happening to this Roomba.、Um, All right. So this poor Roomba. If it were to have a very simple visual system, it might probably have realized it's stuck in the corner of the room, and there is a much bigger open space it can go to. But without eyes, it's stuck. So、um, we haven't, we still haven't answered the question why vision. But、uh, at least I think this is a good example to show you that vision is important. Now let's get get more serious and get some inspiration from nature. So.、Um, I actually have here a very small fossil, and it's too small for most of you to see, so I enlarged it. And this fossil comes from more than 500 millions of years ago, and it's called trilobites.、Um, so for hundreds of millions of years, our Earth was filled with these simple animals. They are soft-bodied. They are simple,、uh, consisted、uh, consisted of not too many cells, and they just float around, and they eat when the some kind of food come、uh, crossing their path, and life was very mellow. <laughs> and 543 million years ago, something happened, and that's what people call Cambrian explosion. And this is a very interesting time in the sense of evolution. It's an astonishingly short period of time, and within this period of time,、um, animals diversified, and the the number of species just exploded to the point that evolutionary biologists <laughs> call this the Big Bang of evolution. The Big Bang of evolution is still today the biggest mystery, one of the biggest mysteries in evolution, and there are many theories proposed to explain what happened. Why 543 million years ago suddenly animals just diversified? So, one of the leading theory,、um, and to me the most convincing one, was proposed by an Australian zoologist called Andrew Parker. Andrew Parker conjectured. The Cambrian explosion is triggered by the sudden evolution of vision, which set off an evolutionary arms race where animals either evolved or died. So. 
The idea is that vision fundamentally changed the behavior of animals. Before that, these trilobites, they were just floating around and catching food. Now suddenly, food seeking is a proactive uh, act or behavior. So predators have to go out and get food and preys have to go around and hide away from the pred predators. So vision changed, um, changed nature and evolution and the rest is history. So I believe just as visual intelligence is important to nature, it is a cornerstone of all intelligence. Especially today, we're here to talk about artificial intelligence and the field of computer vision. Computer vision is already and will be shaping our lives and society. Almost every aspect of our life, it's being impacted by computer vision. You can think of uh, entertainment, um, outer space and deep underwater uh, exploration, personal robots, um, healthcare, medicine, uh, uh, surveillance and, and security, assistive driving, industrial robots. Every area and every um, technology um, is um, taking advantage of computer vision technology. So let's first talk about what is seeing involving. Why I think it's exciting, and more importantly, what's so challenging about it? What are the challenges my students and I have to face, as well as many computer vision scientists, when we design visual intelligence systems? So the first section I'm going to um, get into today is seeing is challenging. I think. Um, the monster's illusion is a very good illustration of the challenges of vision. So our world is fundamentally 3D. But the projection of our 3D world onto your retina or onto a, a picture is 2D. So you have to figure out, be it a, a brain or a computer, has to figure out what's going on between uh, in this 3D world by using a 2D image. That is the fundamental challenge. That is why in this illusion, the two monsters are actually exactly the same size in pixel areas. But your brain has worked its way out to understand the 3D world. So you have to infer these are two, uh, one, uh, this is one big monster chasing a small monster. And uh, this is an even more striking and peculiar uh, visual illusion to illustrate that our brain worked very hard, sometimes too hard, to interpret the world. So you see a checkerboard, and you see block A and block B. If I tell you, trust me, block A and block B are exactly the same grayscale. Huh? No, you laugh. You won't trust me. I'll block off most of the scene. Okay, let me go back. Block A and block B are exactly the same grayscale. Don't believe it. Yeah. So, um, so let me just repeat. Vision is very challenging because our 3D world is cluttered full of objects, and they occlude each other. Much of vision is involved in interpreting uh, and inferring this 3D world based on limited information, which is a 2D imagery. So it took more than 500 millions of years of nature to de design and develop the most powerful visual intelligent machinery in the universe, which is our human visual system. So it's no surprising that I tell you that more than half of every one of your brain is involved in vision. It is by far the biggest sensory system in your brain. And we need all this resource to do this very challenging task. So compared to evolution, the field of computer vision is very, very, very young. In fact, it started on July 7th of 1966. This is a true story. In July, in, in 1966, some professor in artificial intelligence lab at MIT has figured 
that AI has advanced so much by that time, we can use one summer and hire a couple of smart MIT undergrads and figure out a visual uh, uh, and, and build a visual system. That was the summer project. They probably got some money from somewhere and thought they would get it done in one summer. <laughs> Luckily, at least for me, that didn't happen. <laughs> and uh, almost 50 years later, our field is thriving and growing, and uh, we have many, many bright young people working in this field. So really, for the rest of this uh, talk, I'm going to go through very briefly a journey uh, in the past 50 years, in five minutes, um, about what has happened in computer vision and, and by, uh, showing you a few work from my lab. So what are the key components of building a visually intelligent machine? First, I think we need to recognize objects. Objects are building blocks of our world and building blocks for visual intelligence. So in fact, one of the pioneering work of um, object recognition was uh, started here at Stanford by some, uh, a group of pioneering roboticists and computer scientists. And you can see back in, back in um, 1979, um, object recognition was very simple. It focused on these line drawings of simple objects, mainly to just illustrate the idea and prove the concept. So let's just fast forward about three, two to three decades. In modern days, we computer vision scientists work with real world pictures and try to recognize objects in these real world scenes. For more than 10 years, after, shortly after the turn of the 21st century, our field has been working with this very important data set called Pascal VOC data set that consists of 20 object classes and annually, our field uh, computer vision scientists will get together and evaluate different algorithms and see how, how much progress we have made. And that plot shows you over from 2009 to 2012, uh, we have made quite a bit of uh, progress. 